I want you to understand that today's message, outside of salvation, may be the most important thing you could ever hear. Because if you aren't equipped to face the real battles that we all face, then, then you aren't able to, to, to live victorious. Several years ago, I had a lady say something that I've never forgotten. In fact, with the years that have passed, it's, it's, it's been something I've pondered more and more. She said, Pastor, the devil only has a few outfits. Please figure out what he's wearing and let us know. And so over my years of ministry and walk with God, I've learned that, that she was very, very right. We do need to recognize the outfits that the devil wears. Uh, however, the devil doesn't just have a few outfits. He's got a, a lot of different ways that he tries to come at us. Today, God's led me to reveal to you some of the main outfits and signs of the devil, some of the ways Scripture clearly tells us that the devil is out to, to wreck our lives. Now, because of this powerful truth that, that God wants me to share with you about the devil, it's, it's extremely important that we bow our heads right now in prayer. Would you bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, let your truth and your spirit reign in this place. Open our eyes to see what you want us to see. Open our ears to hear what you want us to hear. Open our hearts to receive what it is you want us to receive. Change us from the inside out. May we leave out not walking in fear, but walking in faith. Lord, not, not trying to get you to agree with our life, but us, Lord, coming into agreement with your will. God, I pray that you would speak clearly and lovingly and graciously today through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you do or maybe you don't know, um, the greatest battle you will ever face, ever, no matter what it is, no matter what your loss, no matter what your situation, is a spiritual battle. The spiritual battle. And, and God cares about you, but the devil doesn't. And the devil is very, very real with a capital D. God's led me to share with you a message I've entitled, Beware of These Things. And my, um, my youngest son told me, he said, Daddy, I'm not going to be able to not laugh when you say that. I said, that's okay, Asher. I said, I'm calling you out, getting that behind me. But I want you to hear this today. I, I titled this that way for two reasons. Number one, I knew that anybody listening online or seeing it online, they don't want to hear nothing about no devil. So they wouldn't have hit and started listening. You see what I mean? God's got to get their attention, so, so I, I mean, listen, sometimes God uses reverse psychology to reach some people. But every D that I'm going to be sharing are clear things that, that we need to know about our adversary. It's extremely important that you recognize how the devil is trying to uh, derail your life. And by the way, I, I failed to say this earlier. It was what God put on my heart just to say to some of you, whoever this is meant to be. God said to tell you that, that you need to remember what, if he got you here, he'll take you there. If he got you here and you didn't even think you could get here, I'm not talking about just the church, I'm talking about where you're getting through stuff that you didn't ever think you'd get through, he'll take you through and to whatever he's got for you. I want to share with you this message. Look at your worship guides with me, if you will. Try to follow along. The first thing we need to understand about the devil is the most extreme thing that should get your attention. The devil aims to destroy and devour. The enemy wants to not only destroy you, but devour you, cut you up into pieces, ruin everything that God has for you. Listen, the devil loves it when people don't even believe he exists. There's some of you, many of you probably, you take it seriously, but many listening right now, they don't. The devil loves it when people don't even recognize him. See, that's easy prey. He, he, listen, you know why it, the scriptures say that Jesus, when he looked out on the lost sheep, he um, had compassion on them because he said they, they were harassed and helpless, sheep without a shepherd. You, <clears throat> you think your life's bad? Try not knowing who your shepherd is. Try, try coming up with your own will instead of seeking his will. That'll put anybody in a tizzy and a daisy in this life because there's not a whole lot we get to control. But listen, the moment that you feel like God is in control and you give God the reins, all of a sudden you have hope. Listen, the devil loves it when Christians let their spiritual guards down. If you're a believer and, and have been a believer for some time, all of us have done this before. 
We thought we could hit the coast button. We knew enough to be dangerous. We meant, we meant good in our heart, but we weren't praying as fervently as we would if we were in the middle of a crisis. How many of you know most people, prayer is the last resort, not the first response, isn't it? And so when we, when we start coming undone and, and we're no longer prayer conditioned, I can tell you right now, you are, you are right where the devil wants because he's going to slap you in the face. He's going to knock you down. It's going to take you by surprise because he found the perfect window and he did what you never thought could happen. Listen, whether you think so or not, Satan is out to destroy your life. John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That richness is not about money or our possessions. While we thank God for every blessing we have, it is about having joy within, peace within, purpose within, hope within. No matter what comes, rain, sleet, or snow, a child of God has no reason to fear even though we do fear at times. Listen, God's word and even Jesus said it many a time. He said, we're in a spiritual battle and you need to keep praying, guys. He tried to tell his disciples, he's like, listen, you need to pray because the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. Listen, if Satan it tempts you, you can't overcome that yourself. You can't overcome that yourself. That, that is a spiritual battle that you have to put in God's hands. And, and listen, I always say this. It is better to be proactive than reactive. Proactive is, is, is waking up the same way I do every day, understanding I'm going to have things that happen each day that surprise me, that distract me, that depress me, that overwhelm me, or could hinder me dialing in. And before you know it, you're a puppet. You're a puppet. He's got you in all facets, physically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, financially. That's why 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9 says, Stay alert. Watch out for your greatest enemy, the devil. See, your greatest enemy is the devil. It is not your neighbor. It is not your family member. It is not that person who you feel like is out to get you. That person just didn't be led by God. That's all. But the enemy is the one behind it. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against them. Be strong in your faith. The only way you can stand on this is by faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. Listen, Satan isn't just trying to mislead you. He wants to destroy you and he wants to devour you. Just think about people that you knew. I say knew as in past tense. Guarantee you, everybody in here knows somebody who thought they were living their best life, and before you know it, they take their life. Listen, that didn't start overnight. The devil just keeps feasting like a buzzard. He feasts. He looks. He's like, man, you know what? If you let me in, if you... If you if you'll let me get a, a foothold, I'll take a stronghold. You should never say, I wouldn't, or I couldn't, or I wouldn't ever do this or that. Listen, Adam and Eve, they weren't planning on disobeying God either. But the temptations are strong. Ephesians 4.27 says, do not give the devil a foothold. You've heard me say this before. If you give the devil an inch, he will take a mile every time. He'll, it'll cost you more than you ever wanted to give up, and it'll take you further than you ever wanted to go. I've seen it with anybody. I've seen it with preachers. I've seen it with leaders. I've seen it, period. Enough for me. Listen, sometimes I'll be dealing with somebody, and it, it, the good part that I take from it is this. I go, God, thank you for dialing me back in. Thank you for helping me see that could be me. Thank you for helping me see that the battle's real, that the unexpected can happen at any unexpected time. We have to stay spiritually awake, and we have to cling to our faith daily. A lot of times, the reason why our Mondays don't feel the same as our Sundays, we're seeking right now. Every one of you, you made a choice to be here today. You didn't have to be here. You chose to be here, and it speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. 75% of anybody in our society, they're not coming to church anywhere. 
but, but you're, you're trying to, to seek. But I want you to understand, if you don't take that faith back Monday through Saturday, you're not going to be able to defeat and withstand what's going to come at you. Secondly, the devil aims to distort and to deceive. The devil aims to distort and deceive. We live in a world that no longer believes in absolute truth, period. Forget about just the absolute truth of God. They don't believe in truth. People make up their own religions. People make up their own perceptions. And people just make their decisions based on how they feel and what they want. People will cling to Scripture that they want, but they'll ignore Scripture that convicts. And listen, I promise you, I can't talk about the devil without just getting all up in your business. It's not possible. I knew coming in that, that you were going to have to receive this uh, uh, with love. But God's going to speak to you. Listen, Satan has convinced many that Christianity is just another world religion. So, hey, why don't we all just say, hey, we're, every, all religions are good. All religions do not lead to God. There's only one God and there's only one Savior. And his name's Jesus Christ. There's only one word and that's the word of God. Satan has convinced many that God's word is no longer relevant and, and, and right. Listen, that's no new thing. Just so we accept that, that's been happening for years and years and years and years and years because we resist things that fight with our will. You're always either wanting his will or fighting with that will. I gave up that surrender a long time ago. It, it makes my life a whole lot easier. I'm not having to w worry about you know, um, what, what's going to go on because I know that to the best of my ability, I'm saying, God, you take it all. You take my heart. You take my life. You take this ministry. You take my family. You take my marriage. You take whatever that I'm dealing with. I go ahead and give it to God quick. I put it in his hands, and I've learned to trust it in his hands. Listen to how Satan distorted God's truth going all the way back to the Garden of Eden with Eve and Adam. Genesis 3, 1 through 5, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty, the devil's crafty, than any of the wild animals in the Lord, the, the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. What does Satan say? He says, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Listen, when it comes to truth, Satan loves to tell you what you want to hear, and he'll take even the truth that you know God's Word says, and he will twist it so that it, it's no longer black and white, it's gray and negotiable. He says, I know God's Word says this. By the way, anytime, I'm just saying it because I would say this to anybody. Anytime somebody comes to me, and they, and they say, whether in person or on the phone, and they say, I know I shouldn't do this, but... Or, I know I should do this, but. I'm like, listen, there's nothing else to talk about. You need to figure out how you can get your butt out of the way. Another good one. I need to write that down. I've never said that in my life. I, I, I really did. I prayed that God would season things here and there. He didn't do that in the first service, just that, that you could get a little bit of relief for a moment. Listen, Satan says if it feels good to you, makes you happy. It can't be that bad. And see, sin, sin always feels good in the moment and doesn't feel good later on. Everything God sends you to, every God, everything God directs you to, it's, it's not going to lead you to a life of regret. I've seen plenty of person on a bed of regret on the last days of their life. Tears rolling. I've, I've seen so many, I can't even count them. Pastor, man, I just wish I had done this sooner. I wish I'd have lived like I was dying. And before they know it, they are dying. And they, know they, got, they, they, don't have, they don't have time to go redo. You see, listen, if you still got air in your lungs, you got opportunity. You got opportunity. And, 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 and you, you, you need to hear me when I say Satan says, I know what God's word says, but 
Here is my interpretation. John 8, 44, Jesus says, He has always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Everything we're talking about, it's about the the character of the devil. Listen, Satan loves to deceive you, and I want you to write this down. He loves to give you a counterfeit hope. It looks like a $100 bill, but it's not. It looks like it's really good, but it's not. It looks like it could be God's plan, but it's not. He loves to twist things and that were already made clear in Scripture and even made clear to you, and then he loves to twist it and turn it and, and negotiate. Satan loves it when you and I treat clear sin lightly. You know why he loves it when we treat um, sin lightly? It's because sin separates us from a right relationship with God. You, listen, you can't be living in willful, unrepented sin and have a close relationship with God. You can't tell me you and God got your own thing going because it's not a matter of what you think is going. I've spent those times with that. Listen, I've spent plenty of years not walking with God. I, I didn't have any ill intention. I'm talking about even as a pastor. How many of you know it takes, it, it takes a long time? If you're a new believer, I want to say that to you. It takes a good while to understand how to walk with God and let God work on you, in you, and through you. You, you got to get to that point where, where you're just, um, uh, 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 this is where I am with my ministry, for instance. It's taken all 30 plus years to get to where I just know I'm just God's pipeline. I just happen to be up here. I'm nothing special. I just happen to be called to do what I'm doing. And, 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 and the reason I get excited is I always know, if I sought God and his will, I know the message is going to be right. If I, if I got God on my side, who can be against me? He's going to work. I don't got to work. I don't got to, listen, you don't have to work for God. You need to let God do the work. One thing that has had many, many, many Christians and churchgoers in years past have been enslaved self-martyrs, obligated to the ceiling, doing things, trying to get God's approval, doing things to try to make themselves feel closer to God. Listen, you don't have to do a thing. You just got to let God do his thing. It takes a huge load off of you. Oh, man, I mean, listen, my heaviest times, especially as a pastor, is when I actually think that I've got to build the ark by myself or that I've got to push this or change that or whatever. Listen, I ain't got to push it. I ain't got to pull it. God's got it. We live in a society that creates its own truth, and that's because their perception of truth, listen to this, has been distorted. Okay? You may feel certain things, but your feelings, listen, our own heart, and if you've ever been like me, your own heart can deceive you. Had it happen? Listen, simple misunderstanding is all it takes to start tumbling. But if you know the truth and you, and you know God's word and, and, and his will about certain things, it helps you recognize things that are not, and it can set you free. John eight thirty two. Jesus said, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. When you walk in the truth, you walk in freedom. But thirdly, the devil aims to discourage and derail. The devil aims to discourage you and to derail things. The devil aims to discourage your walk with God. You do whatever, he, whatever it takes. I guarantee you, there were people who hoped they could get at church today. There's a real, real desire. They were trying to get to church. But some things got in the way. Satan got in the way. He does what he can to discourage your walk with God. And here's the big thing you need to know. And to derail God's plans. If you aren't looking out for the devil and knowing how to, to um, uh, win that battle, the devil is going to derail what God has for you every single time. The devil aims to rob your peace and to ruin God's plans. Any of us at any time, listen, we can be knocked down by the evil one any time, any moment. I've had it happen. I've had it happen in times when, when, when I, I just, 
You know how you, you can sometimes just feel like, man, you know, um, everything's good till it's not. And you're sitting there just gasping, overwhelmed, discouraged, fearful, feeling hopeless and helpless. Psalm 143, 3 through 4, it said, My enemy has chased me. He has knocked me to the ground. He forces me to live in darkness like those in the grave. I am losing all hope. I am paralyzed with fear. Any of you in here who've lived long enough, you've had something happen in your life, whether it's a phone call, a situation, a death, a sudden, sudden bit of news you just never expected to get it. You know what I mean when I say you are just completely done. And you don't even know what hits you. Listen, don't buy Satan's lie that you're ever hopeless. I don't care what your situation is. You are not hopeless. Even if the people around you forsake you, even if the situations around you aren't great right now, you're no longer a slave to fear. God's got hope for you. He says, I, I got plans not to harm you, but to give you a hope in the future. Listen, only God can take madness and take us to the mountain. Don't buy Satan's lie that you've fallen down so far that God can't pick you up. Listen, you can be absolutely living in the will of God and still be discouraged. You know what I mean? Think about it. You learned that in life. Discouragement's a part of life. Life is constant trials, sorrows, whether our own or those we care about around. We're human. The devil is always after you. Is the point here. The devil wants to discourage your heart so much that you quit. Because listen, when you give up on God, that's a very low place to be. That's the lowest you can be. When you give up on God, when you feel like God's nowhere to be found, when you feel like you've been forsaken, when you feel like the, the odds are so stacked against you, you might as well quit. When you quit seeking God's will and therefore you can't accomplish God's will, sometimes you just need to know that God's got you. But the devil's real. What the devil... Meant for bad, God plans to use for good. That is a true, true scriptural thing. He works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. A true believer in Jesus Christ never has anything to fear because even death is forever hope. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear anything. For I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. Listen, don't give up on God because he has not give up on you. If you've got nothing left in you, you get on your knees, you get on your face, you give it all to God, and you'll find the peace of God unless you take it back. But fourthly, the devil aims to divide and disorder. The devil aims to divide and disorder. Now, here's where the pastor's going to be starting doing a little bit of preaching. And so I want you to hear me real clearly. Because how many of you know in your life, as you're walking with Christ, uh, and uh, new levels are new devils, okay? When you get serious about your walk with Christ, the more serious you become, the more the, you're a threat to the enemy, and so the tests come, the temptations come, the, 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 the distortion comes, the, the disorder, the division comes. Well, I want you to hear something and understand this is very pur purposeful for me to say. By the grace of God, Refuge Church is, is seeing over 200 worshipers weekly now. And, and, but did you know that only 10% of churches in the world, in the world, ever average over 200? Ever. Let me tell you why I know that doesn't happen. Outside of just the fact that that's the statistics. 80% never see over, over 100. 80% of all churches in the world. Let me tell you why it doesn't make it past 200. Because more people together start having more fights. Starts looking like um, Waterboro word of mouth. <laughs> Lord Jesus. See, everybody here, done, everybody here has done been affected by Waterboro word of mouth. It is like, it is like the audio version or the, or the, the, the reading version of um, Jerry Springer. Waterboro, somebody need to come up with a Facebook page. Waterboro Wild. Waterboro Wild, Charles. But I want you to hear this. The more people you gather, it's harder to stay on the same page. It's 
harder to stay on the same page. Trust me. I mean, listen, I, I would, uh, one thing that always I have a healthy fear of when there's growth is I go, hey, God, help me, help me have leaders of integrity. Help me have core people of integrity. Help me have other people that will uh, t- together collectively with me love, lift, and lead people. Because all Satan needs is a small window. And the more people, and the more people we see, and I'm telling you, it's not going to be like, oh, we see 100 more or 200 more. It's going to be way beyond that. And it's going to keep happening and happening and happening. What God's doing right now in this church, he's readying us. He's readying us. Some of you, he's been readying you for a good long time. A lot of you in here, I trust. A lot of you, I, I love deeply. A lot of you, I appreciate your support. And, 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 and I hope you, hope you know that, 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 um, that, that I genuinely mean that. But how many of you know that Satan loves to divide churches? Now, I can say this since I grew up Baptist all my life, so I'm saying it that way. It's like talking about your own family. I grew up Baptist. What we used to say is we don't start any churches. We just break up one. It, it, listen, it happens to the best. I got a pastor friend. His church was the largest over on the other side of um, uh, Buford. He lost in one week just from one of his associates that he had had a while um, that was over his youth stuff. He lost 300 people of his congregation in one week. 300. Ain't too many lived through that. But I've seen, listen, I've seen the devil work so much to where I have a tenacity about this. I promise you this. It's like I used to tell people. I said, listen, walk through the doors. Just come see us sometime, and, and, and if if you don't feel loved, come back the next week because whoever greeted you won't be there. We have to be, listen, sometimes you got to be mean in a good way. Mean about division. Every one of you, I want you to hear me right now. The best thing you can do for this church, first of all, pray. Secondly, surrender. Thirdly, act like Christ ambassadors. Be Jesus so we can See people drawn to Jesus. See, if he's high and lifted up, he'll just keep drawing them. They got to see it in your daily life. Then they got to see it in his church. And God does, God does the work. But listen, we got to stay alert because division is always knocking on the door with anything. Divides families, divides marriages, divides uh, friends. Y'all know as well as I do. It, it, it's some of the hardest stuff to heal from. It's just when, when you got somebody that really meant a lot in your life, and all of a sudden that's busted to pieces, and you never could see it coming. Romans 16, 17 through 18. Look at what the Apostle Paul said. He said, and now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you've been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Now, I don't think I've had this happen in this this ministry. But at my previous ministry, um, I've had people come to me and tell me how much they were going to give to the church per month if I did this or that. And I'm like, listen, brother, you might as well go ahead and get out your seat and head on wherever else, because that don't fly here. You, you, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have to escort the devil out. I remember a family. This way actually was a refuge. Talked to them. I listen to people. I hear the heart. I see what they're looking for. And I told this, this one gentleman, his family, I said, what you looking for? That isn't this. You looking for that. We ain't that. There's a reason we ain't that, but we're not against that. I want you, I, listen, you know why we say our vision real fast around here, that we is just to love, lift, and lead people to Christ? Because that is a vision from God. We love people where they are. We love people despite who they are. We want Christ to be lifted up in everything we do and say. And we want to point people to Jesus. For that to happen, we got to get out of Jesus' way. And we got to know how to deal with the devil and division. 1 Corinthians 14, says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the meetings of God's holy people. We got to guard the peace. We got to keep the order. And a lot of times, you know, y'all, how many of y'all know the KISS method? Keep it simple, stupid? That definitely me. That applies to me. I'm the chief stupid. But oftentimes, you just need to keep it simple. 
Keep seeking. Keep loving. Listen, Satan loves to bring division and disorder in your life. I bet some of you, you found it in the workplace. You found it in the home. You found it through relationships. And, and you're going, man, why is all, how did all of this stuff get here? I, I've dealt with so many broken families before that I can just see that the grief is way greater than a real death. It, is this, it just rips them to shreds. But we know who's behind that. The enemy, listen, the enemy is not the person that you're looking at. The enemy is the devil. And by the way, he can hijack any of us all the time. He does it to preachers just as much as he does it to others. We got to keep seeking. We got to keep surrendering. Romans 16, 20 says, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. It just came to my heart. You know, if you see a small fire, Try to put it out before it becomes a wildfire. Listen, Satan's always on the prowl. He's looking to destroy. He's looking to devour, to distort and deceive you, to discourage and derail, to divide and disorder. Satan loves it when you can't even recognize him. Or even better yet, he loves it when you don't even believe him. You don't even believe he exists. So you're like, that's imaginary. Satan loves it when you let your guard down. And your praying knees get lazy. And that happens to all of us. Satan loves it when you try to fight the battle alone. Do you know what a lot of people are battling right now that are sitting home, going through stuff, and they need the church more than anybody? Satan will get you isolated from the very people and the relationships that you need the most. When you are isolated, no matter how much faith you've ever had, you're in a danger zone because two are better than one. When one falls down, the other one can pick him up. But when nobody is there to pick him up, that's a terrible situation, the word says. Satan loves it, though, in this, on closing. He loves it when you turn away and turn away, turn, turn everywhere but Jesus. You hear me? You turn everywhere. You try to fix this problem, fix that situation, work on this. God, when I get this right, when I fix this, I'll get back to talking to you and I'll get back to your church or whatever else. Listen, life's always going to be broken. You're broken. But you're always turning the right way when you go, where does Jesus want me to go with this? See, Satan loves to obsess us with the, with the things that he plans to use to derail us. The devil will stop at nothing to turn you away from Jesus, to give you a reason to say, I don't believe because that shouldn't happen. Listen, you can only overcome the devil through the power of Christ. You can only overcome the devil through the power of Jesus Christ. Look what 1 John 3, 8 says. It says the Son of God, that's Jesus, came to destroy the works of the devil. Listen, if there was no devil and there was no sin, Jesus wouldn't have needed to come. Romans 8, 2 says, because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. John 8, 36 so if, says, so if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. There's a, there's a freedom in the surrender because no longer is it a situation just resting on your shoulders and, and building up anxiety in your heart, but, but there's a Savior there and there's hope there. Listen, when you get serious with Jesus, you're going to feel greater attack. Not because you weren't already being greatly attacked, but now you recognize the attack because you've gone to the other side. You got the Spirit of God pulling you one way, and you got the devil trying to pull you the other way, and now you are in this tug of war. Ephesians 6, 11 through 13 in closing says, Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Listen, if you are walking in the full armor of Christ, there will be nothing that life brings you that you can't handle with his help. And if God got you here, he'll take you there. The devil is greater than you. 
but our Savior is greater than him. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we are not wandering children, but we are children of God, blood-bought through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, who overcame sin and the grave through his resurrection. God, we thank you that, that through your Son, Jesus, we're able to have relationship with you. We're able to have a forever relationship with you. God, you promise you'll never leave us nor forsake us. You promise, Lord, that, that no matter what comes against us, Lord, if you be with us, nothing can come against us. Lord, we know that, that the devil is working 24-7. But, Lord, may we not allow him to continue to harass us, to continue to, to have a stronghold on us. God, I pray for freedom from people that have things that are in the dark. I pray those things come to light so that they can find freedom in you. Lord, we all fight certain demons, Lord, and the only way we can, we can win those, Lord, you tell us we are more than victorious through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, I pray if there's anyone listening right now that's never given their heart and life to Christ and they don't know you personally, and they don't have the assurance of going to heaven. God, I pray they understand, Lord, and, 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 and say this prayer with me, Lord, right now. Dear God, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe, Jesus, in your death, burial, and resurrection for the forgiveness of my sin and the promise of eternal hope. Jesus, come into my heart and take over my life. Lead me from this point forward. Thank you for saving my soul. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray anybody that needs to dial in a little bit more, they just won't recognize in the enemy. Lord, may they understand where the taunting and the tempting come from. Lord, may they talk with whoever they need to talk with, go wherever they need to go. Lord, may they just keep taking the next right step, Lord. I pray they understand today, Lord, that humbling themselves before you completely, heart, mind, soul, life, past, present, future. Lord, you said if we humble ourselves before you, you will lift us up. And Lord, then your son will be lifted up through us and despite us. In Jesus' name, Lord, we lift all things up. Amen. As you stand with us for this closing song, I'm available here should you want to talk with me and me pray with you. This altar is open.